Hello again and welcome back to this series of Christmas videos. Now a few weeks ago we looked at this lovely traditional long and low table arrangement and what I'm going to do today is take it apart, use the big roses and probably the Nordman pine there that's at the bottom, add it to some new materials to create a different style of design but something that is still suitable for the centre of your table. Okay so let's have a little look see what we've got. Now I'm going to add two more candles so we're going to have four candles in total and I'm sure if you're in the UK you'll know that there's a joke that goes along with the four candles. So four candles. This time I'm going to go with the gold theme rather than the red and silver so I've got some very small little um, matte coloured baubles. We're going to use those. I'm going to introduce some texture with some of the Mullenbeckia vine. Now this is a vine that we buy commercially to add um, texture and contrast into a design. We also use it to create wreaths to work on. This, this would form the base for um, a Christmas door wreath or a design to go onto the grave. Um, you can also grow the Mullenbeckia vine in the garden. It grows very well in the UK. has a small green leaf on it during the summer but if you don't have a vine like this you could maybe use clematis or honeysuckle or any branches or thin twigs that you have in your garden. So that's going to give me the outline shape and some beautiful colour and texture. Now I'm still going to use the Nordman pine which is um, the same as the Christmas tree pine but you could use blue pine or conifer instead or again any type of textural evergreens that you might have in the garden. I'm going to introduce some contrast in the shape and colour with some of the camellia. Now this is native to the UK, um, probably in lots of other parts of the world as well but a lovely flat glossy leaf and that's going to contrast beautifully there against the pine. And I've also got some red, this is Fortinia Red Robin, again a shrub that will grow in the UK. Um, and I know each month when, whenever I um, show a new video I always quote that foliage comes from the UK and that's obviously because I'm from the UK and I know what can grow here in our UK gardens. But I'm sure that if you're in Europe or America, and I know lots of you watch from all around the world, um, if you don't have a Fatinia red robin like this in your garden, you might have something with that wonderful red colouring on it. So I've got a few small bits of that. And this has come off a fairly new shrub. So I've only really, um, I've limited myself to how much I can cut from it. So I've just cut a few short pieces off it. Um, and the design is going to be long and low. So we don't need anything too long for this design. Nice, small and compact foliage. Now to add a different shape, again a different texture, contrast in material, I've got some of the rose hips. Now it could be a holly berry instead. Um, if you've got roses in the garden you might have some of the rose hips as your rose bush dies off and goes to seed. And I'm going to be using that lovely red rose that you saw in the design we did a few weeks ago. And um, I think that's pretty much going to be my main flower content. I don't think I'm going to introduce anything else. We're just going to have the lovely evergreens, different colours and different shapes. And I might as I go along think maybe I'll introduce something else but I think at the moment we're just going to go with these two lovely textured material of beautiful rose and that lovely rose hip. So we'll change the camera angle or maybe bring you in a little bit closer so you can see how the design is constructed and uh, let's get started. Now the container that I've chosen to use is this melamine rectangular base, it's probably about an inch in height and you can compare the size of it to the block of foam that I've got here standing on its side. So this is a full block 
Um, I'm not going to use all that, but I just wanted to show you the size of it so you could gauge um, a rough idea of the scale of this design. Now, if you don't have a melamine container just like this, or you don't have anything rectangle, you can always use the plastic spray trays that we have in the floristry. You'd be able to buy these at a good florist shop or possibly online. That holds a single block, so that's what we refer to as a single block tray. And if you wanted to make a longer design, then you can go and purchase yourself one of these bigger designs. So this holds three blocks quite comfortably in there. And there is also a tray that will hold two blocks. So if you've got a large table or a small table, there's something quite adequate for you to use. But for today, I'm going to use this lovely um, melamine base, which is nice and sturdy and a really good size for the center of a table. Now the block on the top here is way too large so I'm going to remove about a third off the top. Now normally I would do this before preparing my foam but I just wanted to show you the size of the foam that I'm using. And I've wedged this quite firmly into the container so I'm not going to use any floral tape to hold that into place. It's nice and secure and it's not going to move around. And I'll keep these pieces because these will be good to insert down to the, in the side of containers to stop my floral foam moving around. So I'm not gonna waste them, I'm gonna keep them to one side. Now the design that we created before was a radial style arrangement and that tends to be the way that we arrange more traditional flowers. And by radial, I mean that all the flowers and the foliages rotate from a center point. So they all look like they're coming from the center of your floral foam, which we would refer to as your focal point. Um, it doesn't matter whether the design is small, whether it's a posy on the table or it's a large design from the church. Anything that's arranged traditionally radiates out from a center point, just like I'm showing now. Now, back in the 80s, now we sometimes refer to this as a modern style of flower arranging, but it really has been around, whoops, since the 80s. We got introduced to the parallel style of arranging, which came over from Europe. And that's where flowers and foliages are arranged in a parallel style. And if you think about lampposts all the way down the road or tracks of a railway line, then they are arranged parallel. And the space between the bottom and the top is equidistant. Um, if I just insert those into the foam. So the gap here running from top to bottom is exactly the same. And this is what we call parallel style. It's probably a more European style of arranging, but it is often referred to as modern. And really, if you think about how long ago the 80s were, then it's probably not a very modern way of arranging. Um, but for today, that's how we're going to do this uh, design. We're going to arrange all our materials in a parallel fashion, very much like soldiers on parade, all in a line, rather than radiating out from a centre point, which is seen as far more traditional and a very British way of flower arranging. Now, before we insert our material, I'm going to add in my candles. So what I'm going to have to try and do is visualize the candles equally spaced apart in my floral foam and this time we've got four the design last week uh, we used two so this would be a fabulous design if you wanted to make an advent ring and you wanted to do it in a slightly different style you could do this style of arranging instead of that traditional circle you could have your four candles um, placed apart just like this now, I probably should have measured this before I started so that we had them more equally spaced out. But for the purposes of the video, that's going to be adequate. And again, it's a design that's going to be seen from both sides. So it's an all round design. It isn't a front facing design where we don't have any interest in materials, just foliage for balance placed at the back. OK, so my candles are in. Now I'm going to introduce some of this lovely vine nice natural product and uh, I've got myself some florist wires which are just down here by my side I'm going to cut the wire in half and I'm going to create myself a little hairpin so we end up with a piece of wire there bent like a pin that you would put in your hair to hold your flowers hold your flowers hold your hair into place and I'll turn this around as it 
as I do it, but I need to be able to look at, at it as I'm creating it. So I'm going to use a couple of those hairpins just to hold this textured material into place and I'm almost going to put it in in layers so I'm going to start with some close to the foam so you can see now that introduces a lovely bit of texture to the base of the foam and I'm going to add the foliage through this nice textured material and then add it a little bit later into the arrangement as well because it's going to be we won't lose it completely, um, but it'll be nice to add it in layers so we create depth within the arrangement. Now we're going to do this a couple of times with the wires, make sure it's nice and sturdy. And then what I'm going to do is add some shorter pieces there in the side and make sure that that's attached nice and firmly as well. Now if you wanted to, you could of course just use lots of this vine and no foliage at all. So there's lots of different ways of creating a design. There we are, okay. So don't worry too much if you've got bits that are sticking out in different directions. We'll, we'll add to that as we go along. I'm just going to remove this to one side so my area is a little bit tidier to work on. Okay, so we have that nice interesting texture incorporated into the design. Now what I'm going to do is add some of the Nordman pine. And what I'm going to do is I'm only going to use these very short little pieces. And I quite often say that they're a little bit bigger than your thumb. So if you measure from your thumb down, that's a really good size to use. And what I'll do is I'll cut myself quite a few pieces ready remove the little pine needles off the bottom so we've got a clear section there to go in the foam and I'm going to work on the back first and we're going to insert these in that parallel style so when I turn it round I'll explain to you how that parallel fashion works and I'm putting them quite close together so we're almost creating a bit of a, a border or a skirt around the design and I'm inserting them through the vine so that we've got it weaved in and out of that lovely vine. And we'll, we'll have a look at it in just a second when I turn it around. It's a bit fiddly to do, but it creates a really lovely modern feel to the design. Okay, so if we just turn that around for a moment. Now you'll see they're all in a parallel style, so they're all placed in the same position and in the same angle, coming out almost at a sort of 90 degree angle from the foam. So what we're doing is placing them like this along the foam, matching the shape of those candles. We're not bringing them out at an angle from the centre. A few little taller bits. Now this is great for um, designs where your materials are that linear shape, that linear pattern. It doesn't work quite so well when you have materials that are much fuller and much bunchier. Um, but it's great for the pines. Um, fabulous for any type of conifer that you can get hold of and I'm going to do the same continue that pattern straight down the side just finish off that front section so you can see how that pattern comes together then when we get to the corner so what I'm avoiding doing is using any pieces like this because it sends your eye off in different directions we need those straight pieces um, you can remove the sides shoots so what I've done with this one to make it straighter I've removed the side pieces so I've got a nice straight piece and then when we come to the corner section we're almost going to bring it around a little bit more of an angled position on the side so it's a little slightly more radiated on the corner and that's only because we need to get a seamless join from one side to the other so we then get that sort of style. Let me just pull back so you can see it behind the clear wall. And um, 
far straighter and far more rigid. Okay, so we speeded that process up because it's probably a little bit boring to sit and watch me inserting pieces of foliage in. But you'll see now I've got a really clear um, rectangular, sorry, I couldn't think of the word then. I've got a really clear rectangle shape with the design. Whereas last time we had almost a diamond or an oval shape. This gives you a much more rigid, straighter pattern. And it works beautifully with this rectangular container. And you can see that I've worked in between the vines, the vine is still quite clear. I've gone the same width on the end and I've gone the same length with the greenery on both sides. So we've got a really equal design front and back. And it echoes the parallel shape of the candles on the top there. All the material is inserted straight into the foam in that um, very typical parallel style of arranging. Right, okay, so now we've done the outline shape. Now we need to think about bringing some of the material there up to the top. So again, I'm going to look at bringing some of the pine. And it's important to bring the materials from the outside up towards the centre as well, so that we don't end up with this really clear band around the outside of pine. But this time my pieces are going to be a lot shorter. And again, I'm arranging them in that very rigid sort of parallel style. Now this is a great design for short pieces of foliage so if you're new to flower arranging and you can't get hold of a lot of material um, but you can access materials from the garden then this is a brilliant one to have because you don't need to have tall long branches to create a really nice design. So I'm working along in that still in that parallel style from one side to the other they are angled slightly more into the foam um, because we need to cover all of the areas of the foam. If I put them in parallel facing to the ceiling, we would still have this section here on the end that wasn't uh, covered. We'd still have the foam showing on the side, but they're still placed in, in a parallel position. They're still coming from their own point within the floral foam. And I've done that on both sides and I'll keep working my way through right the way to the other end. Now as well as um, being a good design to use if you're new to flower arranging, it's also a really good design to create with shorter supermarket flowers. You know quite often the roses that you have in the supermarket are often quite short, it's hard to get hold of tall stems. So if you don't have access to a good florist shop where they can provide you with long stemmed roses, this is a really good style and shape of arrangement to do. It's also much narrower than the design we did a few weeks ago, so it takes up less space on the table. This is a great one for a, a buffet table as well. You can sit it at the back of the table and it doesn't take up too much space. Now what I'm doing down the centre line there is I'm bringing in some of the greenery, that same pine, but this time it's facing up, almost repeating again the shape of those candles. I've still got quite a lot of foam showing, you can see there, but we've got two different textured materials still to go in, so at this stage I don't want to overcrowd it too much. Right, now, now I'm going to go with the red Fatinia Red Robin. This is this lovely textured and a darker red candle. And I did say back 
back in the previous video that possibly these candles are quite bright compared to the colours in the foliage that I've got. Um, but unfortunately, it's all I've got to work with. So the Fetinia, this lovely red robin, is a much darker red, it's a much richer red, but it's a brilliant co uh, colour combination with the brown colouring of my Mullenbeckia vine. Um, so it is a bit cherry red on the top, um, but it's okay. I don't think anybody will mind. But again, I'm going in straight up. So I'm facing the red colouring towards the sky and I'm interspersing it between and in and out of the candles so I've got colour distributed all throughout the design. Now what I'm going to do now is bring a little bit of the red towards the outer edge to break up some of the dark green. You don't have to do this if you don't have enough foliage to bring the red to the outside edge but it helps to link the top section and the side section so we get um, an even distribution of the colour. Now if we think about scale, so scale is one of our principles and elements of design and you'll see that the flowers, oh sorry, the foliage that I've used, so the Fetinia leaf is very small, so it's small in relation to the rest of the materials I've got in the design. If I placed something large in there, like a big flat ivy leaf or um, a laurel leaf, the scale would be incorrect and I would have very large materials against something that's quite small and delicate. Okay, so one little bit there of the red. And if I show you that, I'm hoping that there's a fairly good even distribution of the red from one side of the design to the other. But I haven't lost that clear rectangular shape that I wanted to create on the outside. Now I'm going to introduce just a few bits of the camellia. This is a bigger leaf, so I don't want to overcrowd it. Um, I'm going to use them individually and again remembering not to radiate them all out from the centre point. But I love the glossy texture of the camellia. Really is a pretty leaf. Nice bit of glossy texture alongside the pine is going to give me a really good contrast. Um, and I'm not coming up too high alongside those candles either. The candles are probably my focal point within the design and traditionally when we're arranging in that radial style we often have one focal point but when we do this slightly more modern style of design you can have more than one focal point and it might be that my large rose becomes the focal point but I'm thinking that because the candle is quite tall and quite dominant we might end up with four areas that are taking the focal limelight. Okay, so a couple more up this end. And again, I'm remembering to insert them in in a, the parallel style. I'm not radiating them out from a centre point. So I'm thinking for a moment that's all the foliage that I'm going to place in. We can still see lots of the floral foam um, through the centre of the foliage but that's going to allow me plenty of space to put my flowers in without damaging the stems and without trying to force them between the foliage and at the end I'll probably introduce a little bit more of the Mullenbeckia vine um, slightly over the top and that's going to give me again a an, an slightly different texture and colour combination but so far I'm quite pleased with that. Right, now my main rose, or my main focal flower I should say, the larger choice flower that I'm going to use is this lovely rose. And I'm going to start with one in between each of the candles. Now I don't know if I'm going to use as many roses as I did in the previous design. Um, I might just stick to a few here in the centre. Now I often say that I've imagined beforehand what this design is going to look like and sometimes I sketch it to think about how the mechanics are going to work and the style of the material that I'm going to use but it doesn't always uh, work out the way that you're imagining um, but 
at the moment I've got quite a severe line down the centre with the red roses and it's following very much the line of the candle but for me that's really too rigid and too stiff so what I'm going to do is space them out a little bit and you'll see that that line down the middle becomes a little bit more pleasing a bit of movement in it what we refer to as rhythm instead of it being really severe down the centre I've now got a more wavy line there through the middle which is I think a much more pleasing to the eye and again if I spin it round I'll just remove that bit of rose petal that's a bit damaged if I spin it round it's pretty much the same from front to back so if you're sitting opposite one another on a table you've both got something really interesting to look at okay so let's now start introducing the rose hips so again I've chosen these because it's a beautiful contrast in shape and texture very Christmassy very winter in its appearance and I'm going to break them down into smaller sections we don't need them to be quite as large as the single heads and I'm going to work my way down again from one side to the other in that same position placing them in parallel to one another still making them slightly longer and slightly shorter so we create depth and movement and some recession now recession we haven't talked about a great deal in the videos but recession is placing flowers at different heights um, it helps draw your eye right down into where the floral foam is creates depth helps to cover your floral foam as well and really gives you that three-dimensional effect that we need to create within the flower arrangement now whenever working with candles always remember not to leave them unoccupied they will burn down obviously and there is a possibility that they will set fire to the pine uh, if you're making this for a friend as a Christmas gift or you're making it for yourself at home please don't leave it unattended because we don't want any accidents over the Christmas period right now I think I've probably only used two or three pieces there of that lovely rose hip um, and the one thing that's brilliant about this is you can cut it down into so many different sections you don't need a great deal of them to create a fabulous arrangement okay so how's that coming together so far still got quite a lot of the floral foam showing but I'm not worried at this stage um, I don't think I'm going to introduce any more roses I think if we bring the roses on the side it's going to become quite heavy and uh, I want this design to be quite lightweight and um, not visually too very heavy so what I'm going to do now is introduce my little gold baubles and these are just your shop bought baubles they're already on wire on the bottom and again we're repeating the shape so we've got a round shape of that rose and now I've got a round shape of the bauble I'm going to stagger them throughout just like I did with the roses so that we create some um, visual rhythm helps your eye move from one side of the design to the other now I happen to have four on that side no no set sort of pattern and I probably before I photograph this I might need to grab myself another row um, another little bauble because I've only got three to go on this side but what I'm looking to do here is not to repeat the pattern exactly from one side to the other so let's just move that one so these two baubles here so I've got a gold one on either side I don't want these to be in exactly the same position on front and back because it becomes too repetitive and creates a diagonal line across the arrangement so we need to stagger them slightly oh I found my found my extra bauble and again make sure it's not directly opposite the one on the other side so I think that's coming together really nicely so far now if you don't have baubles that could be fruit you could even intersperse some little fairy lights from one side to the other ready for your Christmas lunch now at this stage all I'm really going to do is to fill in with some foliage just to make sure that the gaps are 
filled in. You could introduce some gold textured foliage in there if you wanted to, but I'm going to keep with the green. And then I'll probably speed it up because this is a bit, you know, it's not a very exciting part watching me fill in all the gaps. And then we'll come back when I'm going to add some more of the vine to the top of the design. Okay, so we're back. I've covered the majority of the floral foam. There might be a little odd section where you can still see the green foam underneath, but um, I'm quite happy with how that's worked out. Now what I'm going to do is bring back some of the vine and separate it off a little bit so it's a little thinner and not quite so dense in its um, consistency. And I'm going to work that over the top so that you can still see the foliages and the baubles and the red rose coming through but it really introduces that nice wintry texture and it's a very European style of arranging. Now another material that would be fabulous in this would be some moss. So if you're creating Christmas door wreaths for yourself this year and you end up with lots of short pieces of foliage left after you've made your wreath, this is a brilliant design to use up all those short pieces that you've got left. So what I might do is photograph it with some moss and photograph it as the design is now so you can see two different varieties of the style. Now what I would need to do here is to add some wires into there just to make sure that that vine is secure in the design but for me I think that's finished. So quite, quite a simple combination of flowers. We've only got five roses that could be a carnation instead or um, a large gerbera, that would look really quite attractive. But a simple amount of foliage, um, four lovely tall taper candles and I think we've got a really pretty design. So I hope you've enjoyed that one. And don't forget if you are enjoying we've got a series of Christmas designs that you can watch. We've already uploaded two videos for you to see. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying. Please tell your friends that there are lots of interesting videos they can watch. And if you want to be notified each time I upload a video, then please hit the notification bell. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon with another Christmas design. And thanks for watching. Bye bye for now.